Hey guys. Oh, you play? Yeah, you did it play. Welcome to the new episode of NBGC. You Brew. cannot hold that while you're driving. I can do whatever. Give I want. me. I'm gonna set it right here. No. Fine. We are going over all the spoilers, and by all the spoilers, I mean all the ones that we think are not terrible and constructed. Well, okay. No. I want to go over specifically constructed cards because there is just a bunch of cards in the set that are good limited cards. So there's not really, to my personal opinion, going over a ton of limited cards. If you want a limited review, go over limited resources, because that's the place to go for limited reviews. So, first card. Well, we're just going to start over. I don't remember what we did. Doc, Doc, Tar, the Adamant. Foreign, foreign name. The White. Three and a White, the uh, Vigilance guy, zero, zero, and it's with four counters, so the it's Abzan. not actually the, zero, zero. The Abzan Con of the past. Yeah, tap one and two hybrid green, black. Move a one counter from one thing to another thing. So basically, he's a four four vigilance for five. For four. For four. Uh, so already, pretty solid stats. Uh, and then he can move counters. Decent. Possibly construct player. Decent. Like, not, he's not the most amazing card, but he can certainly find a home. And it's something I think you could keep an eye on. It certainly seems fun in EDH. There are plenty of things you can do with counters. Probably a two of though. I think at most, yeah, it must be like a two of. Because legendary. If the four man ever gets super aggressive, I would definitely love to be playing a four mana four four vigilance. Yeah. That gets bigger or makes other things bigger, yes. Shu Yun, Silent Tempest. Two and a blue for a three two with prowess. Also, like a uh, secret of the way, he has another clause. Basically, prowess, whenever you cast no creature spell with me, put a hot, pay two hybrid, red or white. If you do, get something double strike. So. Is, if you do that to him, his auto swinging for eight because he's a four and three. Yeah, a proud I didn't really so. like this guy in like EDH because EDH is just full of shenanigans. You can play this guy super early, and then like Voltron him up. Voltron is certainly a fun style of commander people choose to play. This guy fits very well into that. Like you play your sword, give him double strike, equip the sword, and attack for a boatload of damage. Oh, uh, standard he might see play as like a one of. Probably not though. He does have to compete with a lot of cards in the deck. He has to compete with Manus Rider. Also three times. So yeah, he has to compete with Manus Rider and the um, well, yeah, Master yeah. for now. And then mentor of whatever. Yeah, mentor of whatever. We will we'll go, go over him, but yes, mentor of something that makes one one browse guys. Yeah, next next is Soulfire Grandmaster. Everyone's really happy about this card. One white for a two two life link. Instance and sorcery spells you control have life link. Tap two and then two hybrid blue red. The next time you cast an instant sorcery, if it goes to the graveyard, put it back in your head instead. This card will definitely see some constructed play, especially right off the bat. This Probably card is sideboard play. Yeah, I think this card is going to end up being retired to sideboard play. This I card might play is one of over. just so I can infinite draw cards with my Jages and Genuities. <laughs> yes, this is fine in like the sideboard of control deck like, for in a control mirror to just you know buy back your draw spells or counter spells. But this card is definitely not worth a main deck slot unless your field is full of aggressive decks and you're playing. The Guess Guy Burn deck, you know, standard aggro tempo, whatever you wish to call it. As a pro tour called it, Guess Guy Wins. It's really lame, but we'll go with it. Uh, that's only really good in that kind of style of deck. It could go in like the red white deck with the Magnum Jets, so Lightning Strike, Searing Blood, those kind of cards. Soak the Flames. But it's just honestly not that good of a main deck card unless your meta is full of aggressive decks. In a meta of mid range and control decks, this is not where you want to be in that specific style of deck. You are trying to kill him as quickly as possible. Seeker of the Way is just better. It gains lifelink, so it's going to gain you life anyway, and gets bigger, so it will attack for more damage. Sure, it can't buy back your spells, but in that deck, you're normally not in the position to be buying back spells anyway. Okay. Yeah. We should go over Aisha for Smiles of Death, though. Yes, Aisha. Two and a red. Three, two, first strike. Whenever Aisha, who Smiles of Death, attacks, you may pay two hybrid white, black, correct? To every white block, yeah. And return target creature with power two or less from your graveyard to the battlefield, tapped and attacking. I personally love this card, just in general. The only problem with it moving forward for now... Literally, in general. Like yes, uh, just general and in standard, I love this card in Constructed oh, and in like, my old Mardu deck. The only problem is Doomwick Giant is one heck of a card. So as long as that card is popular in standard, I would certainly try to shy away from her strategy because she favors the uh, 16... One mana, two ones you can play now, like Tormented Hero, Soldier of Pantheon, the new white guy, and Gnarled Scarhide. Like, it favors those cards. The problem with those cards is when your opponent plays a Doomwake Giant, you are going to die. A little bit. A little bit. When Doomwake Giant is gone, we'll also be losing eight one drops. So I think we definitely still have the white guy, and we'll probably still have another one drop at some point. 
to go with Mardu. We, I mean, worst case scenario, you get that one one that when it attacks, each opponent loses one life. I mean, that's not exciting, but that's fine. Uh, you could also just play this in red, white, or red, black. So I definitely am going to be picking me up, like, three of these. Yes, three of them. For when rotation happens or Doomwake Giant dies down. Preferably, Doomwake Giant would die down so I can play Soldier Pantheon, Tormented Hero, and Gnarl Skyhide. That's what I put. Torn Elemental, Torn Blue, for a 3 5 flying. Whenever it attacks, tap all creatures defending player controls. That's amazing. Okay, anyways. Tap 3 and 2 hybrid, green, black. Put Torminal from Exile onto the battlefield tapped, activated only as a sorcery. Potentially playable because it has put it into play from Exile because of Delve. So you're gonna, it's a repetitive Delve, thing. Yes. Delve makes a card game, possibly playable in constructing EDH. I'm getting a mad glare off that screen. Anyway, I think I have sunglasses. It's fine. I have sunglasses. Uh, the main reason to point this card out is because of Legacy. There is a Food Chain combo deck in Legacy. Uh, food Chain, I think, is 200 green at the enchantment. Exile a creature. Yes, exile a creature you control. You Add X mana to your mana pool where X is that creature's color plus one. Converted mana cost plus Converted one. Converted mana cost plus one. In any combination of colors. Yes, in any combination. Uh, this. So it's infinite mana. Yeah, with Mist Hollow Griffin, which was with similar to our mana, two blue blue for a 3 3 flyer, you may cast from exile. Uh, combos with that makes infinite mana, and you can do many things with infinite mana. This is another way to combo with it, so that is the only real reason pointed out. Also, though, aside from the note, is there's a original blue eye control deck. We've played main deck rest in peace last standard. Because it played Mist Hollow Griffin as a threat as a four of, so you can never physically kill that threat. Because it goes graveyard, gets exiled, and you recast it. So there could be that similar good. style of deck with this. It would just it would take a new card to do it. But that is possible. I mean, my deck was Esper and I was playing mine. <laughs> I was playing Esper mode with Miss Hollow Griffin to, you know, Dirtle. Not to win, to Dirtle. Hey, the deck was pretty bad. It had like a 50% win percentage against the, the decks that were most popular. I don't even remember what it was back then, but yes. Esper Control. I had a really good Esper Control. Thanks, sorry. Sieges are all right. We're going through this. Uh, Sieges are all right. I don't see him playing a lot of play. We'll find something, guys, I promise. Cloud form, right? One and two blue. Enchantment. Whenever it enters the battlefield, it becomes an aura with enchant creature. Then you manifest the top card of your library, and you enchant that creature with this. Enchanted creature has flying and hexproof. So it's like a living weapon, except for enchantments manifest. So you basically, it's a three mana 2 2 flying hexproof that has the potential to filter a card or become a much bigger flying hexproof. It's pretty good. It's decent. I don't know if it'll see any constructive play. I think it should. Well, I like. it looks like they're putting hexproof back to standard Sogamol or this thing in Bizarre Tower Archer. Maybe there's a really bad Bogle stick in standard. Oh no, if you scry and set that up, it's pretty good. I mean, Sogamol is just a good card. It's not seeing enough. Enhanced play. awareness, four in a blue. Draw three cards and then discard a card. Similar to Jason's Ingenuity, but it fuels Delve. Is it instant? Yes. Okay, so this card. So it's playable. Not the best, but it's playable. Well, though. like, if you're playing Jason's Ingenuity and you're playing Delve cards, you could easily play this card. Fascinating. Fascination is the next card. See what I did there? Bad fun. Two blue and X. Each player draws X or each player mills X. Do you... EDH, yes. There's plenty of milling EDH, oddly enough. Like if there's ever a mill deck in standard. Casual there. players love this, love milling, like with X spells. It. I love mind grind personally, but that's not as good as mind grind. Just whatever. But it is certainly playable. Not maybe not in standard. Uh, maybe there's a deck dirtly enough to be playing that card. But you never know. Blue white control is pretty dirtly, you never know. Rock Shosh is the same. Counter target spell instant control page. One colorless for each card in your graveyard. Two in a blue instant speed. So has great potential because of Fetchland standard. So like it's all right. It's another like playable counter spell that only costs one blue. So it's decent. Indeed. And it only gets better later the gun goes usually. So if you're playing it in the deck. Man, that sun. That sun though. I don't like all the cards you're picking, but whatever. Whatever. I'm just saying. I like how you've got, he's just scrolling down the color section right now. He's scrolling down white and blue. We'll be going over the other colors soon. Shut up. I just wanted to sing a lot. Aisha just wants to know. Renowned Weaponsmith is interesting. Add, tap, add two colors. Spend this mana only to cast artifact spells or activate abilities. Tap one blue and it. Search your library for a card named Heartpiercer Bow or Vile Dragonfire. Reveal it. There's a huge blur. Put it in your hand and then shuffle. One in the blue for a 1-3. So, 
this card is certainly like def blue white control decks have not been above playing like Augur of Bolas and Omen Speaker mainly as blockers. Augur of Bolas was exceptional though because it drew a card. Uh, Omen Speaker, Yoke Dogs, these cards have been known to see some sideboard play in the blue white control decks. This card could. It does do what, like, in the old Mirrodin block, a card did something very similar to this. If you controlled one of, like, all three different equipments, there was one in each set. The first card in the first set spoiled the name of the last team. It this spoiled though. the Vial of Dragon, or whatever that was. Vial, Vial of Dragon. Dragonfire. I haven't, I didn't see it. That card has not been spoiled yet. It is in the next set. Heart Pierce Bow, on the other hand, is in the previous set. And that was a really bad artifact equipment. Yes, so, sir. this is a cool thing they'll do every once in a while. They'll make a card that matters if you have three other cards. I don't know why he pointed it out. Maybe because it's a 1-3 that draws two bad cards. It's well, interesting. Vial of Dragonfire might be good. You never know. Vial of Dragonfire might be yeah, a... You might like this. Player. Rally the Ancestors. Two white and X. Instant speed. Very important. Reanimate each creature with Converted Madhouse X or less from your graveyard. Exile them at the beginning of your next upkeep, and then exile Rally the Ancestors. So you do at the end of turn, get a, you get all your guys oh, back, and yes, I'll will strike the shit out of them. Uh, anyone who's ever played the Immortal Servitude deck? Yes, this card is really good. I did play a version of Immortal Servitude back in the day. Mainly because I was busy playing Blood Artist, and I was like, how can I break Blood Artist? Cartel Aristocrat, Immortal Servitude, seems good enough. It was really good, guys. Mardu Woe Reaper. One white for eight, two one. Whenever Mardu Woe Reaper or another warrior enters the battlefield under your control, you may exile target creature card from a graveyard. If you do, you gain one life. Yes, so it's main deck hate for the whip deck that is still a one mana two one. That's perfect in the aggressive deck it goes in. It goes in warriors because it's a warrior and cares about warriors. This goes perfect in the Aisha Who Smiles at Death deck. Because it will enter and exile another card, which is a nice little trick. If your opponent plays a whip expecting to whip something back, the problem, the whip decks are also playing 